Hey guys, and welcome back to Federico Wants Watches, brought to you by Watch One. Today I'm with my good friend, well, a new friend, Eric Glass from our uh, sales floor. How you doing, Eric? Thanks for having me on, Fed. I'm excellent. So today I figured we'd play one of our customary little games. But of course, before we get started, people get pissed at this because I always forget. Wristwatch check. So today I'm wearing my PAM 111, perfect for the hot South Florida weather on rubber. What are you rocking today? Uh, I'm actually wearing the IWC Top Gun Miramar. Um, it's on a tactical strap or a canvas strap, as you may call. Oh, also great for the balmy, humid uh, Florida weather. Um, another reason why to wear a nice rubber strap like that. Um, one of my personal favorites. It's I love that kind of like shiny case. It's it's very interesting for ceramics. It tends to be matte, especially if you're into panorais. They usually use matte cases. Yeah, I, I like the fact that the contrasting dial and um, numerals really make it easy to read. Mm -hmm. And well, obviously it's a big case size, so and it's got a nice big crown for my gigantic hands. So it makes it easier for me to wind and set the watch. So uh, big those watches are... for big big dudes, right? Yeah, uh, that's gonna be another show. Yeah, big watches <laughs> for big dudes. So tune in. Maybe we'll do that. Oh, never know. <laughs> never we'll get on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Obviously here at Watch You Want, we sell pre-owned watches. So this is obviously a little bit of a plug for our business, but it's an interesting topic. I figured we'd pick three watches each that we think you should avoid buying brand new. All right? Okay. So do you want me to start it or should you start? Um, well, I mean, I got one off the top of my head. Um, you know, with something like that, I always kind of think of like the Quorum brand. Yes, yeah, okay. Um, now it's a it's a watch brand that I actually happen to like. Once again, big watches for big guys that do the forty eight millimeter Admiral's Cup. I love the bubble, like especially the older ones with the crazy dials, like the poker, the you know the the Fun. bomber face, all that, all those great models. But um, you know, I think um, over the years the Admiral Cups kind of lost its uh, charm in the in the marketplace, and you can get them heavily discounted, um, pre-owned, and you know, I think that's the, once again, the advantage of watch you want versus new, is you get the advantage of a heavily discounted watch that's in like new condition with boxes and papers, certified by us, and uh, I think you can't do well, wrong by that. What, what kind of, what kind of price difference are we talking between new and used? 50 plus off. You know? 50 plus? Yeah. Yeah, you can't really argue with that, can you? No, no, 50 off, 50 to 60 off, depending on the um, material the watch is made out of and which Admiral's Cup it is, some are a little bit more mm -hmm. popular than others, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty significantly discounted watch. Now, another one I'm going to say, and you tell me if, if you agree with me, because I agree with you, I'm going to say Blanc Pain. Particularly models from the mid-2000s that are a little bit smaller, or other models such as the, the Le Mans or the Aqualung, they seem to, you know, they're a very well-made watch. They're obviously a luxury brand. They're auto lingerie, in my opinion. But yeah, it's somewhere around that like forty to sixty percent off mark for a mint condition blanc pain. Is that is that your experience? It is, and um, you know, usually when people think of blanc pain, they think of the fifty fathoms. Yeah. Um, they think of the sapphire um, bezel. And, um, you know, they think of that dive watch and the history that goes along with it. And I, I kind of agree with you, the smaller, even the Le Mans, which is a really cool watch and they make a lot of different versions of it and it has great complications. It's in today's day and age, people want something that's a little bit larger than you see with a watch like that. So kind of. And, and that's a great point that you bring up with the 50 Fathoms because that's like a pillar model. That's the icon right. of Blanc Pain. And that will never drop as much as say a Le Mans or a V or A, right? Yeah, so correct. yeah, you know, 40 to 60% off, little caveat though, probably not the 50 fathoms. But those watches have a place, you know, if you're a guy who wears a suit or you're, you wear, you're going out to dinner or you're going to a business affair, a watch like that that fits nice under the suit and you got a little bit of, especially if it's a gold watch that has nice little color, um, you know, it fits right into a collection of multiple watches. But once again, do you want to spend at the top or, you know, you want to add it to your collection down here, so. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of, of pre-owned, right? You, somebody else takes the depreciation hit Correct. before you do, <laughs> you know, right. essentially. Exactly. Um, but then again, there's also risks with buying pre-owned, but that's why we kind of service everything before it goes out. Well, we know we have a saying here at Watch You Want, don't buy the watch, buy the watch seller, because the watch is sold itself. If you're calling us about a specific watch, it's because either you've already tried it on, you've already fallen in love with it, or you've been watching it forever, and now you're ready to move forward. But when you come to Watch You Want, we set ourselves apart from everybody else by having certified watchmakers on, on 
on premise. Well, before we get accused of, and I'm sure this is going to happen, accused yeah. of this being a complete promotional video and stunt, which, you know, hint, hint, we are a business, so sorry, guys. What is your second brand? My, my second brand, um, I'll go something a little bit maybe well-known, but not something that's really high-end. That's like a tag, like a tag hoyer to okay. watch. Well, well-known, it's been around, it's got... Um, it's got heritage, it's got history, it's got a lot of stuff going for it, but once again, it's a brand that's heavily discounted in the marketplace, and but even more discounted on the pre-owned side. Except for vintage, right? Like none of that, you're not referring to like Hoyer chronographs. No, no, I'm not talking about um, Hoyer chronographs. I'm talking about specifically modern day tag Hoyer watches, the Grand mm -hmm. Carrera, even the new new um, the new watch line that does they just released the um, the Turbion. Didn't they just release the Turbion? Oh yeah, that's that's a crazy price, sixteen thousand for a uh, Turbion, which is fantastic. Right, but now we haven't seen any Turbions recently. Um, but you know, you got to figure in the next year or so, or even sooner, we're going to see that watch, and it's going to be. Significantly, significantly less, correct. All right. Well, yeah, that makes sense because even on the retail side, you know, I, I used to work on the on the retail side. It was pretty easy to get a tag at a, at a decent price. So I imagine pre-owned, you know, even more so the case. Uh, I'm gonna go with a brand everybody knows I love because I've talked about this on my old channel. I've already talked about it with Tim, Roger Duby or Roger Dubuis, if we want to pronounce it a little bit more correctly. It's a fantastic watch brand, in my opinion. Pre Richemont, they didn't really work all that well. Post Richemont, you know, the kinks have been worked out. But in my opinion, because we have a few of them in stock here, we do. You get a ton of bang for your buck of really high end watchmaking with a Geneva seal movement, as you pointed out earlier, yep. for Rolex or Breitling money. I mean, once again, you have to ask yourself, not everybody is into a watch for the technical, the, technical, the technicality of the watch. You know, it's about the way it looks. And what I like and appreciate about Roger Dubuis is that it's not the normal. It, well, that's why I like it. Yeah. Because if I'm spending that kind of money, I want to be unique, right? Well, besides the Geneva Seal, I mean, look at look at some of the homage pieces. Look at the Excalibur. Look at um, they did the Easy Diver. They do an Easy Diver Square. Well, like they, they did. It's just continuing. Right, right, but I mean, once again, you can, they're out there and they're just cool, cool pieces. They're unique, almost Art Deco in its style and um, in its fit and finish. And in, you know, sometimes if you're looking to set yourself apart from everybody else, not want to walk into the room with what everybody else is wearing. Some Mariner GMT. Well, it's like Art Deco <laughs> exploded, right? right? Like really big. Yes, Mariner GMT. Yeah. Well, you know, the beautiful thing is, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you have more experience with the pricing than I do. We're talking like 70 off retail all day long. Yeah, I mean, here's a perfect example. So we have some of those... Um, um, perpetual calendar homage pieces, the rose gold. Now they're on the smaller, the, the retro grades, the retro grades, right? But and I think those watches probably retail in the sixty thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. I think we're asking, I think somewhere between fifteen and twenty for those pieces. Oh, under twenty. I yeah. know it's under twenty because that's on my short list of <laughs> Federico buys a new watch. Well, that goes to tell you, we get stuff all the time, so it's kind of hard to keep track of all that stuff. But yeah, but that's that's a perfect example. A watch that does everything. You know, um, we had one recently that did, it was a chronograph, it was a perpetual calendar, it had a moon phase, it was retrograde. And actually, um, we sold that to a good friend of mine, David. So, hope you're enjoying the watch, David. Absolutely, I bet he is. So, I guess, what is your third pick? Because we've done, we've done Blancpain, we've done Tag Heuer, we've done Roger Dubuis. My, my third pick is, a, is another one of those watch brands that has long history. We've done Corum, sorry. Uh, right, um, so I'm thinking Gerard Perigo. Yes. Another one of those watches that has a, a in-house movement. Um, it's been around a long time. People know it really, really well known in Europe and well worn in Europe and yes. here in the States, not so much. So it's heavily discounted. And if you're into cars, Gerard Perigo is also some great um, Ferrari watches as oh, well, yeah. which I really enjoy. And those you can have for a steal. I actually made a video on my own channel, uh, top three most undervalued brands, and GP was there because, as far as I know, they're. I mean, they've used Adam Movements, but they're predominantly in-house. They make some really cool watches, but they just they just don't sell well. And that's a great thing for watch collectors and the second-hand market. But I, I think with, with a brand like that, which what I see is, is that it doesn't have that um, brand recognition, the brand power, the marketing power behind some of the other brands. I mean, 
Some brands are just synonymous with watches. If you could speak to a non-watch person, go, hey, what do you know about watches? And their first word is Rolex. They know yeah. Patek. You know, they Swatch, know, even. right? They know, they know those brands. But you know, Gerard Perigo, even though it's a well-made, high-quality watch, it's been around for a very long time. It just does not get that same recognition. Yeah. I deal with a client of mine who loves Gerard Perigo. He's owned like every Gerard Perigo yeah. there is, and and he tells me all the time. He's like, he goes, I don't get it. I'm like, he goes, it's good for me, but he doesn't get it. And yeah, for most people, it's Gerard Perigo. Who? Yeah, I, exactly. No How knows. do you spell that? Well, let's not even get started <laughs> with that one. And I guess mine, my third pick, is a brand I love. And it retains value a little better than, than the ones we've picked so far, but I still think they can be had for a great price in the secondhand market. And that is Breguet. Yes. Particularly the classique line, like the, the standard dress watch 40 millimeter in a noble metal. I think they're beautiful, and you know, something that retails for 23, 24,000, you could easily pick it up in mint condition for 14, 14 and a half maybe. Yeah, there's something about Breguet. They have like a attention to detail on their on their watches that a lot of other um, brands don't do. And for me, specifically the Type 20 and the 21. Yeah. Like if you even look around the the casing on their watch, they have uh, you know details on the case where a lot of places just leave smooth the, case. They the do the edge finishing. Yeah, right? they do some some cool finishing to the watch that really set it apart. Um, once again, you have to ask yourself, you know. Are you are you buying a watch because of pedigree, because of brand recognition, because it's cool looking, you know? Yeah. That that's what it is. But you can't worry about those things. You got to buy it because well, you see, love it. For for me, Breguet has all of those because I think they look great. They have the pedigree, um, they have the panache, and they speak to me. So I think you know, Breguet, it's under it's under loved, un, you know, un, not unloved, but I think it they deserve a little bit more recognition, but. That just makes it great for for our customers and for us as collectors that we can pick them up well, at a discount. It's also not a, a bad way for um, collectors getting into getting into certain watches and looking to take a step up to into a really well known brand other than maybe a lower level piece. You could do something like that and get it at a really great price, you know, on the pre owned side versus yeah. buying it brand new. And now you're you know slowly building your collection, especially if you like to trade. You know, it kind of plays yeah, itself up and out down, because you can pick up a type type twenty, so the, the standard Aero Naval. What you know, what does that trade for roughly? You know, don't quote us, guys. But um, I, I'm thinking between five and seven, depending on condition and completeness. And you get the Breguet name for Breitling Breitling money. Right. Retail. Exactly, and I think I'd rather wear a Breguet over a Breitling. Not that I don't like Breitling, but I just happen to like the styling of the Breguet a little bit. I own a Breitling. I love Breitling. I love their B01 movement. I own a, a Chronomat Evolution, but I think Br we can all agree Breguet is a whole other echelon right. there in watchmaking. Well, anyway, guys, shorter little episode today, but remember, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm coming out with another video on Thursday, and Tim, of course, is going live tomorrow. And Eric, you know, is going to be on the channel from time to time because you love the camera. The camera well, hopefully you. more often. So, um, you know, I, I love to be on Let the show. Let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think. If I love not, to be on the show. Know, if not, you're fired. No offense. Oh, geez, thanks. I appreciate it. It was nice seeing you guys. Uh, hopefully uh, that's not the case. <laughs> and also, please don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Link in the description below. We have some great quality photography, which is not shot by me because we have photographers. None of that shaky camera stuff that you guys are used to in the Federico Talks Watches Instagram. So, you know, it's a great way to get some great uh, watch content, even on the days when we're not uploading. And of course, a link to our website if you want to check out what's in stock. Thank you so much for sticking around for another episode, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Thanks, man. My pleasure. <laughs>